Today on Cruise Man's Garage, we're installing this Tritium LED light kit onto a 2016 Honda Goldwing. This kit will work with any 2012 to 2017 Goldwing, F6B, or a 2014 and greater Valkyrie. This plug and play light kit from Show Chrome Accessories includes LED running lights, LED turn signals, and very bright LED fog lights. With more than 145,000 fog light kits in the market, Show Chrome Accessories is an industry leader. Your light kit includes detailed installation instructions that will help you with this installation. Remove the left side side cover and then disconnect the negative battery cable on your battery. Remove the lower cowl by removing the six 5mm Allen screws that hold the cowl into place. Okay, now if you look at the front of the bike, uh, we reduced our outer screws down at the bottom on the outside. We have uh, four more screws to remove on the inside, and then, of course, the other one on the other side, the one we just removed. So we have a, one uh, five millimeter here, one here, and then a little black plastic push pin. Uh, it looks like this. I don't know if you can see that. Basically, you just pull on it very firmly, and it will come out. And, of course, you're going to do this on both sides of the bike. But remember, the top outside screws have the longer shoulder. And I just want to show you with my cell phone, we've got all the screws out. There's this other little plastic piece here. And this, this cowl has a plastic piece that fits up underneath here. But you're going to need to know this when it comes time to put this back on, that the cowl that we're removing actually goes behind this piece right here, this little plastic piece. If you mount it in front of that plastic piece, which you may be able to do, it's not going to fit right. So it does take a little work to get it underneath that other little plastic tab there, but when you go to put it back together, you can do it. So I'm going to pull out this left side. Now it's, you may not be able to see that, but it's hanging down. Now I'm going to go get the other side out and then we're going to bring this cowl straight down and then turn it underneath the bike and that it will slip underneath the bike that way. Get this side disconnected. There we go. And then we just slip it right under here like this. Here I'm using a hacksaw blade to cut away the little tabs that hold the knockouts in place on the lower cowl. Now I like to do this from the front of the cowl if you work from the back of the cowl, you could accidentally gouge the, uh, the front of the cowl. So it's a good idea to work from the front and saw through each tab. Once you've removed both of the knockouts, you may feel some you know, rough spots uh, on the inside. And I use a small file to kind of file those down and clean up any rough edges. Okay, now we're going to the we're going to start with the right. Um, I call it a bracket, they call it a mount, <clears throat> but we're going to install these rubber grommets into these holes on the mounts. So now our grommets are installed on the right bracket. I'm going to go ahead and do the left side. Notice that on the right side mount, the grommet on the inside is at the bottom, while on the left mount, that grommet is on the top. There are two 8mm bolts that hold these plastic block offs in place. Use a small 8mm socket to remove these. You could also use a wrench. We'll not reuse these bolts on reassembly. Insert the silver collars on the back of the rubber grommets that we installed earlier on the light mounts. You know the back side because the front has the adjusting screw. The right side engine mount will attach to these three points on the front of the engine. 
The black plastic block off that we removed earlier will go underneath the lamp mount as shown. Now the lamp mount fits on top. Make sure the adjusting screw is aimed outward. And we're going to use three of the 832 bolts and three of those flat washers. And I'm going to start by installing the two outside bolts first. The four millimeter spacer will be placed in between the rubber grommet and the front of the engine, and the bolt obviously will go through it. Use an eight millimeter socket or wrench to firmly tighten all three of these bolts. Now the left side mount attaches in virtually the same way. The difference is the 16 millimeter spacers go between the back of the mount and the black back off as you can see here. Note that we're using the 50 millimeter long bolts on the left side. The largest spacer, which is 20 millimeters, will go behind the inside grommet and the front of the engine. Here I'm holding that 20 millimeter spacer with my right hand and I'm slipping it behind uh, that mount so I can slide the bolt through it and then tighten it of course, you tighten all three bolts. You may have to move some hoses or cables out of the way to get to that engine mount on the left side. Now we're ready to mount the lamp assemblies to the lamp mounting brackets. Here I'm starting with the one on the right side. Uh, you can tell it's the right side because the turn signal and running light uh, is on the outside of the lamp, as you can see here. The lamp assembly attaches to the bracket with three of the four by 10 millimeter uh, pan head screws. You can use a Phillips screwdriver to attach these. Just make sure you feed the cables through the bracket as I'm doing here and then attach the three screws uh, at the indicated points. With the brackets attached to both lamps, we're now ready to install the lamps on the motorcycle. Here I'm installing the right side lamp and you want to make sure that the adjusting screw uh, mounting tab is inserted between the screw and the washer as shown. Insert the gold color flange collars in, inside the grommets on the front of the bracket and then use the 5 by 20 millimeter pan head screws to install that onto the mount. After you've tightened both of these screws on the right side lamp, go ahead and install the left lamp the exact same way. The OEM connectors are located on the front of the engine as shown here. They're gray in color and wrapped in electrical tape. Go ahead and remove the electrical tape to release the connectors. We need to remove this dummy plug from both of these connectors. Press down on this tab and pull on the plug and it will come loose. Now you can connect the plug coming from the fog lamp to the OEM connectors as shown. We're going to have to remove this left side glove box. But to get to the left side glove box, we have to remove this outside trim piece here. To remove this trim piece, get your fingers under the outside bottom corner and pull up firmly. You'll hear a loud click as those pins release and then the trim piece will come loose as shown. The glove box is held in place with four body clips or plastic rivets. To remove these rivets, you simply press down in the center with something sharp like the edge of a flathead screwdriver or even a Phillips screwdriver, and you'll hear a pop. And when you hear that pop, you can then use your fingernail to lift up on that uh, rivet and it will come out of the opening. Okay, there's what it looks like right there. This little body clip, now that we've pressed the center in, you can reset it for reinstallation by pressing up from the bottom. So I'm going to mash it down here on the plastic. Okay, and when you see that pin pop up like that, that means it's ready to be reinstalled. With the clips removed, you can just simply lift out the glove box and set it aside. The next step is to remove the radio control unit. Now the reason we do this is because the fog light switch installs down here where this blank is. Remove the two 5mm Allen screws that hold the radio in place. 
and release the radio unit by pressing in and lifting up on the outside edge at the same time. Now it's connected with some wire harness, so we'll have to disconnect those connectors to get it completely free. If you look under the glove box, uh, where we remove the glove box, you'll see the wires that come from the back of the radio unit. There's a gray connector here. Uh, there are a couple of black connectors. And you can begin removing these by pressing down on the little tabs uh, that hold these connectors in place and hold them together. And we'll need to disconnect all three of these connectors to remove the radio unit. Now one of the black connectors shown here has a different style tab. You actually lift up on that little tab uh, to disconnect this connector. With the three connectors disconnected, you can now carefully remove the radio unit from the bike. Remove the Phillips screw that holds the cable retaining bracket in place. Remove the wire harness out of the way so we can then remove the back panel. You can use a flathead screwdriver in the slots on the side to begin releasing the back panel and remove it. Locate the two small Phillips screws that hold the fog light switch blank in place. You may have to move some wires around to find these screws. Remove both of these screws using a Phillips screwdriver. With the screws removed, the blank will simply pop out from behind. Install the fog light switch in the location where you removed the blank using the same two screws that you just removed. Here you can see the fog light switch installed in the panel. Reinstall the back cover of the unit by snapping it into place. Reinstall the cable retaining bracket. Connect the relay jumper harness to the harness coming from the switch we just installed. Install the black relay if you want your fog lights to be turned off when your high beams come on. If you want your fog lights on whenever the fog light switch is turned on, then install the optional white jumper. The OEM connector for the fog light switch is underneath this rubber boot, which is under the radio control unit. Connect the fog light connector to the OEM connector and then store the relay or jumper and the remaining harness down underneath the radio unit inside the shelter. Reinsert the radio unit by placing the two tabs into the two slots on the shelter and then pushing in and pushing down on the outside. Reinstall the two 5mm Allen screws. After reconnecting the three connectors underneath the glove box for the radio control unit, you can reinstall the glove box. Press the center of the plastic rivets until you hear the click. Then you know they're locked in place. To reinstall the trim piece, start with the little tab at the front of the trim piece and place it in the opening in the shelter and then work your way down, uh, pressing the little plastic clips into place as you go. The two large clips at the bottom you'll need to press in firmly for them to hold. Pull the rubber boot surrounding the mirror housing away from the shelter as shown. Push the mirror housing forward. Locate the turn signal connector inside the mirror housing and disconnect it by pulling up on the small tab. We're now going to route the harness that connects to the fog lights from the turn signals down through the shelter and we want the single connector to end up down by the fog lights where we can connect them. I'm using a long two and a half foot long cable tie as my fishing wire. You could use a coat hanger or anything that will reach that far. I'm going to fish it down first, tape the single connector to the end of it, and then pull it on through. Here you can see the end of the cable tie that's come out down uh, near the top of the fog light. After taping the single connector to the other end of the cable tie, I'm simply going to pull it through, and there it is down by the fog light. I can undo my electrical tape and plug in my connector. The opposite end of this harness has two connectors, one male and one female, and it's pretty obvious how they connect into the bike's connectors, in this case the orange connectors, male to female, female to male. But you want to be careful when you press these connectors together that you don't press too hard. You don't want to push the wires out of the back of the connector. Just press them in enough to where they're firmly in, and that should be good enough. Connect the single connector of the harness to the connector coming out of the fog light and repeat all of this on the right side of the bike. Reconnect the battery so we can test the lights. Test the lights by turning the bike on. Make sure the running lights are working, the turn signals, 
and the fog lights by pressing the switch. Before reinstalling the cowl, now is the time to adjust the fog lights to your desired setting using these adjusting screws at the bottom. You can use the provided cable ties to secure the connectors and wires to existing cables and wires on the Goldwing. When reinstalling the lower cowl, for proper fitment, the tabs on the top left and right, the tabs that have the clip nuts on them, must go underneath the plastic tabs on the fairing as shown. Reinstall the six Allen bolts that we removed earlier in the video. Remember that the topmost Allen bolts have the longer shoulder on them. Also, don't forget to replace the two plastic clips. You can tuck the wire connectors down inside the mirror housing in the shelter and then pull the mirror back and then all you have to do is reinstall the rubber boot back into the slots. Reinstall the left side cover and you're done. Mm -hmm.